Hello all you Conan Exile fans out there. It's Granny Gamester here with another beginner's guide to Conan Exiles. Now I'm playing on the PlayStation 4 single player. And in today's guide, we're going to talk about elixirs and functional war paint buffs. Yeah. So let's get started with the elixirs. Now they are made in your alchemist bench and you need the improved fire bowl cauldron to get the elixirs. So let's see how we can get those. You want to go into your feet. You want to scroll over to survivalist and then down to stone tools and over to potion maker. Now this will give you your improved fireball cauldron. It does require a level 30 to make and it requires the basic fireball cauldron and the steel pick to make. And the steel pick also requires a level 30 to make. Now, as you can see, once you make this, it will give you all your elixirs and these coincide with your attributes. So you'll have one for accuracy, agility, encumbrance, grit, strength, survivability, and vitality. So let's go into our alchemist bench. Now you do not need the improved alchemist bench to do this. You, they will show up in your regular. So here they are over here. We are going to be concerned with um, the elixir of might, which gives you a plus three in strength. Now they all give you a plus three in, in whatever attribute that you're going for. Yeah. Uh, the one thing about these is that they will not stack uh, with food, alcohol, or any of those if you're looking for the same effect. So in other words, if we're going to use strength, you cannot take two or three strength potions and expect to get six or nine uh, attributes for that. No, you'll only get the one. And you cannot uh, use a food or alcohol that also stacks in strength. You can use one that stacks on one of the other attributes if you choose, but it will not work for the same one. The only one that it will stack with is the uh, functional war paints. And that's why I'm covering this also in this guide. So uh, they last for one hour. Uh, you do lose them upon death. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at the strength and what it takes to make that. Now it takes a water-filled glass flask, alchemo-based frost lotus power powder and gray lotus powder. So I have all these here, but I'm sure you're gonna wonder how do you make the water filled glass flask. Now you need to go to your casting table, which I'm sure you already have. And uh, you need to make the glass flask mold, which takes 15 iron bars. And then to make the glass flask, you need uh, the mold and the glass. And the glass you can make by putting crystal in your furnace. So once you have that, you can make some of these. And we will let that perk there. But the thing is, is that when you get them, they are empty. Yeah. So you're probably wondering, well, how do you fill these things? So we're just going to grab this and we're going to go to any water source. I want to open up my inventory. I want to highlight my glass flask. And then I just want to hit my square use button and voila. Yeah. It's filled. It's as easy as that. So once you have that, you also need the powders to make. Now, alchemo base, you should know how to make by now. It just takes um, gold dust and silver dust. And you make that here. And it also tastes acre. So again, to make the powders, which we have here, you just take the frost lotus plant and the gray lotus plant and you pop them into your grinder. Yeah. And that will give you your powders. Yeah. That's why in the previous guide about gardens, I tell you it's important to go out early and gather all your plants and get your garden going. So you will have all these plants available when you go to make your elixirs because each one of these elixirs will require different plants. Like this one is going to require the purple lotus powder and the crimson lotus powder, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why you need to do that. And I will leave a link to that uh, guide at the end of this video. 
So once you have those made, now I have a strength potion on me, elixir. So we're gonna go ahead and take that by using our square button. And as you can see on the left hand side now, I have increased strength. So let's see what that looks like in our attributes. So if we look at my strength, I have a plus eight. And the reason I have a plus eight is because I have a plus five from my armor. Yeah, so these do stack with your armor. And I have the plus three from the elixir. Yeah, so this is a good way to manipulate your attributes, especially if you are reassigned them with a beastal uh, memory. Yeah, and starting all over again, you can actually plan on how to use these elixirs and um, functional war paints to, uh, yeah, make these work. So, all right, once you have those, then you can go on to war paints. Yeah, functional war paints, actually. And to get those, you need a dyer's bench. So to make the dyer's bench, you need to go into your feats. Come on now, you can do it. One more for me. <laughs> the lag's incredible. You want to go over to uh, Survivalist. You want to scroll down to Die Maker. And as you can see, that's going to give me the Dyer's Bench. And that's what I want. And this is, takes a level 25. And it requires the regular Fireball Cauldron to make. So once I have that, I'm going to make the Dyer's Bench. And you can make that in your um, handcrafting section. You will find it right here. So let's go into our Dyer's Bench. And as you can see with this, I can make the inking brush, which takes branch, fur, and plant fiber. Now fur you can get from most animals just by using the knife when you go to harvest them. Yeah, gorillas are great for that. And then on the other side of the map, uh, rams, you can usually pretty surely you're going to get, um, you know, some fur off from those animals. But I would try any of them to see if you're going to get some fur. Uh, easy peasy for that. So in order to get your functional war paints, you need to go back into your feats and you need to scroll over to armor and you need to scroll down to decorative war paints. Now in order to do this, you need to make the inking brush first. Once you do that, you are going to get all of these decorative war paints, but you're still not going to have the functional war paints. And to get those, you need to go over one more. And on the right hand side, you will see it actually says functional war paints. And you need to click on this fee. And you cannot get this until level 42, unfortunately. But all it takes, again, is the inking brush to make. Now, these war paints, again, I like the elixirs coincide with your attributes so you're going to have strength ability uh, agility <laughs> vitality accuracy grit support which is encumbrance and determination which is survival yeah so once you have all these you want to go into your dyer's bench and you want to look for these now these are not um in the same order you have to kind of look for these. They've kind of hidden them. So your accuracy is here. I think it's alphabetical order that they've done these. Yeah, they do. So grit is going to show up in the the G's. Strength is down here in, in the S's. So we want to be concerned with strength because I want to stack this with my elixir. So I need the papyrus roll, which again, you can get in your um, feet. And we need the inking brush, which we already know how to get. We need red dye and dragon pie powder. So the papyrus roll, we're going to go into our feet. We are going to go over to um, our little paint brush here. And under furniture maker, we're going to scroll over until we see the um, papyrus scroll. Now, all you need to do to make this is a level 12 in your artisan's work table to get this yeah so they are very easy to make they only take um papaya, uh, plant fiber to make so easy peasy now the red dye 
you are going to be able to make in your dyer's bench, but it is way down here. And to make that, you're gonna need the water-filled glass flask, which you already know how to make, and the conchinelle, <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce that, is the little red bug that you get from harvesting cactus. Yeah, that's how you get that. So once you make your red dye, now you're gonna need dragon powder. Now to get dragon powder, you need to go over to your improved fireball cauldron. I don't believe you need the improved to do this, but you wanna scroll over to dragon powder and these take the basic materials. You need demon blood, brimstone, crystal, and steel fire to make. Now you probably already know how to make the steel fire because you have to have steel in order to make your um, dye's bench. So uh, yeah. Pretty easy to make the dragon powder. It just takes uh, a little effort here because it, it is kind of expensive. The steel fire 75 is a little expensive um, to make. So go ahead and do that. And again, these war paints uh, give you a plus three in uh, every attribute. They also will last one hour and they also disappear upon death. And um, yeah, these also can, um, be stacked with uh, any of the elixirs, but you can only wear one functional war paint at a time. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and again, these cannot be repaired either. Yeah. And they will stack with uh, potions and, and foods as well. So if you have a, uh, a food that gives you a, a buff and say accuracy or something like that, it will, the war paint will stack with that as well as the elixirs. So let's go ahead and pop one of these strengths on. We just use our square button. So we use that. And as you can see now, I have my war paint on. So let's see what that's gonna give us in our attributes. Now, if you look at my strength, now I have a plus 11. So I have a plus five from the, from the armor. I have a plus three from the elixir and I have a plus three now from the war paint. Yeah, that is pretty nice. So if there is an attribute uh, that you're a little short on and you just do not have enough feet points uh, to push it up to the next buff that you're looking for, yeah, that's a good way to do it. You can really manipulate uh, these attributes by using those two items, which is the elixir and the uh, functional war paints. Yeah. And again, uh, these will last for one hour. Yeah, awesome. So I am going to go ahead and You're gonna come up there for there we go. did that yeah there we go I am going to go ahead and take each one of these that's what I wanted to do here I had to think about what I wanted to do here so we are gonna we already have the strength on so we don't need to take one of those but I am gonna take each one of these elixirs now I cannot do another paint but I can take each one of these elixirs. And now if you look on the left-hand side, I have a buff in each one of these uh, elixirs. Yeah, that's how those work. So if we go back into our attributes now, you can see that I have a plus three. Oops, I must have missed my vitality there. Let's go back and see if we can find that one. Which one is the vitality? It's this one. All right. For some reason that one didn't work. All right, so there we are in our vitality. So if we go back into our attributes, now you see I have a plus three in every one of my attributes. Yeah, so pretty sweet. Pretty sweet how this works. I, I really, really uh, like these. It is a little further in the game, about mid game that you can use these, but if you're going up against a big boss that you know is kind of tough, uh, it doesn't hurt to have these uh, extra buffs on you. So yeah, guys, well, if you found it helpful, please give me that big old like. And if you'd like to see more, just subscribe. And if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified when I post my next video. 
Uh, I will also post at the end of this video a, a link to my uh, beginner's guide and to the last video I did on gardens so uh, you can check out how to uh, grow these plants for the powders you're going to need. So yeah guys, again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, GG out.